Hi, my name is Kerstin Hamanik from Graz University of Technology. And in this presentation, I'd like to give you an overview about our paper, Learning a Variation and Network for Reconstruction of Accelerated MRI Data. The main ingredients to successfully reconstruct undersampled data, according to compressed sensing, are the incoherence of undersampling artifacts, which could be achieved by random or non-Cartesian sampling patterns, sparsity in some transform domain, such as sparse edges, and a nonlinear reconstruction. However, the application of compressed sensing to clinical routine exams is challenging. Although a lot of promising results have been shown for radius sampling, for example, there are some limitations that restrict the application of compressed sensing to clinical routine examinations. Most of the clinical applications use a Cartesian sampling scheme, which violates the compressed sensing conditions. Furthermore, we have to use handcrafted sparsifying transforms, which often leads to unnatural looking images. Additionally, parameters have to be tuned, which is not feasible in clinical practice, and many of the reconstruction algorithms suffer from very long reconstruction times. Let's have now a closer look at the challenges of compressed sensing, and we start here with the formulation as a variation in model. The variation in model consists of a data consistency term and a regularization term. The questions here are, how do we choose a proper regularization term? So how do we choose the potential function and the sparsifying transform? And common examples here are the total variation and the wavelet transform. The next question is, how do we choose a proper regularization parameter? If we choose it too high, the reconstruction still contains artifacts. If we choose it too low, the reconstruction appears oversmoothed. So is this a proper regularization? And the last question is, which optimization algorithm should we use? Because many of them suffer from long reconstruction times and extensive computations. In our approach, we want to combine now two successful fields, variation in models and deep learning. So we want to learn optimal regularization and the entire reconstruction algorithm for the reconstruction of unassembled data. Let's see how the training of this model works. We start from an initial zero fill solution and put it through a network to get some reconstruction. This network has some parameters we want to learn. During training, we compare the reconstruction to a fully sampled reference using some similarity measure. This gives us a reconstruction error, which is propagated back to the variation in the network, and this process is repeated until convergence. Once the parameters are learned, New unseen data can be reconstructed efficiently by simply forward propagating the new data through the network. In our variation and network, we do not only include the zero fold reconstructions, but also the raw multi coil case based data as well as the coil sensitivity maps. The interior structure of the variation and network looks as follows. We said that we want to learn the entire reconstruction algorithm, which is in our case a sequence of T optimal gradient descent steps. The gradient of this gradient descent steps corresponds to the gradient of our general compressed sensing energy functional. Note here that if we would use a single regularization term with fixed L1 norm and a gradient operator, we would end up in the total variation formulation. If we derive now the gradient of the energy functional, we end up in this formulation here. If we look at the regularization part, we see that this can be interpreted as a convolution with filter kernels, application of nonlinear activation functions, and again, convolution with rotated filter kernels. We are interested in learning the filter kernels, activation functions, and data term weights lambda. During training, we impose some additional constraints on the parameters. For the filter kernels, we enforce them to be zero mean and have norm lower equal one. To learn arbitrary activation functions, we parameterize them with Gaussian radial basis functions, where we learn the weights W. Finally, we learn the non-negative regularization parameter. For our experiments, we scanned 20 patients using a 3T clinical scanner and a 15-channel knee coil. We acquired a full clinical protocol with five sequences, which differed in terms of contrast, orientation, and SNR. For our variation and network, 
We used 200 slices from 10 patients for training and the remaining 10 patients for testing. We used the mean squared error similarity measure and the inertial incremental proximal gradient algorithm for optimization. We learned a total number of 10 gradient steps, and in each of these steps, we learned 48 filter kernels of size 11 times 11, along with their corresponding activation functions and data term weights, which corresponds to about 130,000 network parameters. Here, I show you some results of the learned parameters. In the first two rows, you see the results for the real and imaginary part of the filter kernels. In the third row, you see the learned activation functions, and in the last row, you see the integrated activation functions, which can be related to the potential functions in the converse sensing model. We observe different derivative filter kernels of various scales and orientations. And for the potential functions, we see functions which are very close to the convex L1 norm, concave functions, and functions with multiple minima. Now I show you some reconstruction results. I start here with a prudent density scan for regular Cartesian undersampling and acceleration factor 4. This image shows a knee of a 32-year-old male who has osteoarthritis, indicated by the green bracket here. This image shows the zero-fold solution, and we compare it to a linear sense reconstruction where we see a lot of remaining artifacts. If we use a total generalized variation approach, the artifacts are reduced. We also compare to dictionary learning which shows very good results on this image. If we compare this result now to our variation in network reconstruction, we observe both improved image quality in terms of sharpness and reduced undersampling artifacts, and improved quantitative values in terms of RMSE and structure similarity index. Here is also the comparison to the fully sampled reference. Next, I show you results for coronal proton density scans with fat saturation which have a much lower baseline SNR. This image here shows the zero-filled solution of a 57-year-old female, where the green bracket indicates broad-based full-thickness chondral loss and a subchondral cystic change, and the green arrow depicts an extruded and torn medial meniscus. The sense result, which is optimal in terms of RMSE, shows a lot more of residual artifacts. If we look at the total generalized variation reconstruction, the image looks blocky and unnatural at this level of SNR. Also, the dictionary learning result shows remaining artifacts here. Again, our evaluation and network reconstruction shows improved image quality in terms of sharpness and suppression of undersampling artifacts and in terms of quantitative area values. Here we have again a comparison to the fully sampled reference. We did not only perform retrospective experiments, but we also acquired prospectively undersampled data for one patient. Here I show you the results for an axial T2 weighted scan with fat saturation. If we compare the total generalized variation, dictionary learning, and variation in network results, we observe similar behavior as for the retrospective experiments. In addition, we performed a reader study on image quality between variation and network and total generalized variation reconstructions. The data were evaluated by two radiologists for sharpness, SNR, amount of undersampling artifacts, and overall image quality. We made a statistical evaluation using a one sided Wilcoxon signed rank test on the quality scores averaged over the two readers, proving for the null hypothesis. The total generalized variation reconstructions are equal or better than variation in network reconstructions for a given significance level alpha. This table indicates that the image quality is significantly better for both coronal scans and sagittal T2 weighted scans, while the difference in image quality for the axial scans and sagittal prudent density weighted scans is not significant. Let's conclude my presentation. I showed you the concept of variation in networks which connected two successful fields, variation and models, and deep learning. The proposed variation in networks allow for fast and high-quality reconstruction of clinically multi patient data, while important pathologies are preserved. Thank you for listening.